They were the greatest navigators in the world. By interpreting simple things like wave movements, cloud formations, and the arrangement of the stars, these ancient people could find destination points thousands of miles away. And it wasn't guesswork. These were the voyages of the Polynesian Wayfinders, the greatest mariners the world has ever seen. 1778. Captain Cook is about to land on an unknown island 2,500 miles from the nearest mainland. He will call this land the Sandwich Islands in honor of John Montague, the fourth Earl of Sandwich, a supporter of Cook's voyages. Today, we call it Hawaii. But the island is not unknown, nor is it uninhabited. To the people who live there, they call the island Owyhee. These ancient people are descended from the Polynesians. They have lived here for over 1,000 years. Not only have they lived here, but they have thrived. Cook is stunned when he meets them. How, he thinks, could these technologically primitive people have come so far across the vast stretches of Earth's largest ocean? Well, I think their feet is almost unparalleled. You have to realize the time a thousand years ago when Polynesians were treating the ocean as an open highway, that the Europeans were still just clinging, clinging to the shore. I mean, most European sailors couldn't even swim, even back in Captain Cook's day. Captain Cook, I believe, could not swim. So it was a very different attitude towards the sea here in Polynesia. It was seeing the sea as an open highway upon which they could survive almost indefinitely as long as they had enough rainwater for drinking water. And the fact that they could navigate this immense space, I think, is, is a tribute to what an amazing feat Polynesian navigation is. So the Polynesian Triangle is really a grouping of islands that share a common language and culture with Hawaii in the north, Aotearoa or New Zealand in the southwest, and Rapa Nui or Easter Island in the southeast. And all these island groups in between, I really like the term Oceania, coined by, I think, Epeli Haofa. And it gives that sense that the ocean is something that connects us all rather than divides us. Our people were traveling, you know, great distances. And when I mean great distances, I guess I mean like 2,000 miles or more throughout what we today know of as Polynesia. Way before Columbus, even a couple hundred years before the Vikings were sailing in their part of the world, our people were, were great navigators and knew that they weren't going to fall off the edge of the earth. They, they were great observers, great, you know, greatly in, in intuitive to their environment around them and, um, and weren't afraid to just go out and explore. So you got to realize Polynesia is the size of North America. So imagine this. Imagine all of North America being flooded and imagine if people who could steer by the stars from Mexico City to Barrow, Alaska. That's the geography covered by the Polynesians. How does wayfinding really work? Wayfinding is a term that's related to navigation and how our people um, use the celestial bodies, the atmospheric conditions, the oceanic conditions to navigate their way to, from point A to point B. It never ceases to amaze me how the ancient Hawaiians were able to interpret uh, various indicators, you know, celestial objects, birds, migratory marine animals, winds, currents, to be able to deterministically navigate their way around the Polynesian Triangle. In, in wayfinding, you're using celestial bodies, the stars, the sun, the moon, any planets. Um, and so when you see them rising or setting throughout the night, you have a given direction, and you can base the direction that you're heading relative to that point on the horizon. And that applies for the sun and any other rising or setting celestial body. In one example, say, a trip from Hawaii to Tahiti, as you cross the equator, the Southern Cross is used along with meridian pairs such as Merzam in Canis Major and Canopus in Carina the keel of the ship. Using these angles, an imaginary north-south line is cut through the center of the deck. This maintains a course for heading to Tahiti. When the clouds change to a brownish hue, it indicates land as the underside of the clouds reflect the island color. Migratory birds are also observed 
to point the way to the island. Well, it's pretty clear now that the Polynesians did settle the Pacific in purposeful migration, using the stars and other methods to navigate across the vast ocean. There were the beliefs, like in the 50s and 60s, that maybe they just kind of stumbled across these different island chains. The Polynesian Voyaging Society was founded in 1973 to show that ancient Polynesians could have purposefully settled the Polynesian Triangle. They set out to prove that the non-instrumental navigational art of wayfinding really worked. To do this, the PVS built a replica of a double-hulled voyaging canoe, the Hokulea. This canoe is very strong. I mean, for 36 years she's been sailing. It really gives credit to those that built her to be really tough and withstand the probably 100,000 miles that she sailed. Since 1975, the Hokulea has journeyed across the Pacific, recreating the ancient roots of the Pacific sea trades. You know, one of the great accomplishments, I think, is finding Easter Island, which, whereas the rest of Polynesia mainly come in chains of islands, Easter Island is just one little dot at the eastern, southeastern point of the Polynesian Triangle, and the fact that they could find that is a striking navigational feat. Just how expansive were these ancient mariners? There is one intriguing story unfolding on the California coastline. On one of the last pristine wilderness areas in California, the Channel Islands, archaeologists are finding evidence of an ancient seafaring culture. Fishing hooks from the coastline of the American continent have similar qualities to ancient fishing hooks found in Polynesia. Considering the talent Polynesians had for navigating, might it have been possible that these navigators reached the Americas? Polynesian artifacts have similarities to those found in South America. And the sweet potato, which is native to South America, has been found on Easter Island. Could it be? If it is, then it might just rewrite one of the most widely held beliefs about the way humans settled the Americas. For a long time, it has been accepted that during the last great ice age when immense glaciers locked up seawater and lowered the sea levels, ancient peoples walked across the Bering Straits from Russia into the Americas. This would place the New World Exodus about 10,000 years ago. But the ancient seafaring artifacts on California's Channel Islands predate this exodus by an additional 2,000 years. Could it be one more piece of evidence that the Polynesians sailed across the Pacific, even to the American continent? If this is found to be true, then it would imply that the Polynesians developed a technique for regularly voyaging across the vast Pacific Ocean. That accomplishment would show that the Polynesians were, indeed, the world's greatest mariners with no equal in human history. Only further research and anthropology will someday give us the answer. The early Polynesians and the Hawaiians were basically explorers of their day. They were exploring distant islands in a vast ocean. Um, using nothing more than the instruments, their, their senses. Today's explorers are astronomers on the top of mountains like the one we're on here. They're explorers because they're discovering new things as well. Their discoveries are distant objects in this vast universe. So in a way, there's many, many parallels that we can draw between yesterday's explorers and, and today's scientists. I don't see that as discrete moments in time. I think it's more or less a continuum of man seeking knowledge, of getting a better idea of his place within the cosmos.